Hello, and welcome to episode 223 of The Joy of Coding. Hello, how are you? My name is Mike Conley. We're going to be hacking on some Firefox stuff today, as per usual. It's so great to have you here. Uh, I, I have no more preamble. Let's get started. Um, why, why waste time? Why waste time? So let's get, let's get to it. Here's my screen. Here's the agenda. Today is August 5th, 2020. Uh, a reminder, no plan survives breakfast. If you're new to the stream, I just want you to know things could go horribly wrong, especially today, because I'm going to be spelunking into code that I don't really understand. So, um, you know, oftentimes I'm working in code that I might be more familiar with. This is one of those streams where I'm, I'm, I'm diving into the unknown. You know, I have some vague sense, like a very sort of surface, superficial sense of how it works. But I'm hoping to go deep because I need to figure out a way of doing a thing. I'll explain more later. But th basically, things could go wrong today. I might not even get any, like, code written today. But today might be more about study, trying to understand, experimenting, and learning about how a um, complex underlying system that is multi-threaded and, uh, like, what... It's complex. It's complex. Very complex system that someone else has worked on. It's um, mature, battle-hardened, you know, and uh, it exists, and you kind of have to learn how to work with it and understand how it works. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. Hint, it's the WebRTC layer, the, the media layer of how WebRTC works. And I'll go into more detail later, but I just want you to know that things might go horribly wrong. It might get stuck. It might be mostly confusing. That's okay. That's the whole point. You're learning while I'm learning. It's not like I'm going to be walking you through stuff I already know. We're going to be learning at the same time. Uh, the second thing I want you to know is that the agenda that we're looking at, that's this document here, which has some handy links and that will probably evolve, it might evolve as the episode progresses, is available to you. If you're watching this on YouTube, check out the video description for a link. If you're watching this on Air Mozilla, it'll be in the handouts section. And if you're watching this on Twitch, I'm about to drop it into the Twitch chat, one-handed, because I'm holding an apple in the other hand. Here we go. Uh, I'm holding an apple because this is my uh, this is my snack. I failed to uh, have lunch, and I'm hungry, so I'm gonna have an apple, and then I'll have a late lunch. So the agenda is now in the Twitch chat. Um, so yeah, let's see what else is there to talk about today. The episode guide. So there is an episode guide. That's what we're, you know, that's what this section is all about. If you click on this link, you get a nice handy episode guide all the way up to episode 222, which was last week's. Um, special shout out to both Smurf D, who uh, contributed episode 222, and a new contributor who contributed uh, episode 221. That is, um, let me see here, Mbachi. I might be mispronouncing that. I apologize. But special thanks to uh m bachi who uh, contributed to episode 221 really appreciate that and if you yourself are interested in contributing to the episode guide uh, i happily merge in pull requests from pretty much anywhere it doesn't even have to be for the new episodes if you're watching this episode way in the future and the episode guide for two for episode 223 is missing some stuff or you want to expand on it maybe you maybe at the end of this you know so much more about the WebRTC layer that you want to like expound on it inside the episode guide then send me a pull request and if you're not sure what that is or, or how to contribute there are links here in the agenda on how to do that so, uh, for today's episode, uh, it's Pandemic Edition. Uh, as usual, for the past couple of months, I've been streaming from my basement, and that is still the case. I am in my basement, and I'm using my home Wi-Fi, and so if things kind of, for the live stream anyways, if things kind of go awry, if the stream drops, I apologize. We're just dealing with it. Also, special announcement. Next week, do you remember URE Wims? We worked together. We did a stream together uh, about a month ago uh, to great success. And uh, Yuri Wims will be joining me next week to hack on something, to co-hack on something. Uh, and I'm very excited for that. So check it out next week. Yuri Wims returns. So let's let's get down to business. I'm going to take a bite of my apple. Pardon me. Or do you want the ASMR? I hope this isn't gross. I'm just going to give you like the, the ASMR of me biting into an apple. A high density microphone. Here we go. There you go. That's for all you ASMR heads out there. Um, so what we've been working on off and on, or what I've been working on off and on for the past couple of weeks, maybe a month or two, 
is this new indicator for WebRTC. Um, and I've probably demonstrated it before, but just in case, I'll show you again. Imagine, um, actually, I'll use Talkie, because then you'll be able to see. Uh, so Talkie.io is like a WebRTC application that allows you to like video conference for, for free for up to six people. It's great. Uh, and uh, let's see, let's join. I use my uh, FaceTime camera. And so now you can see the green screen and my really nice microphone. Yeah, and then we'll join the call. And see, we've got this like little indicator down here at the bottom to let me know that I'm sharing my microphone and my camera. But when you click on this, what might have, uh, what might have seemed like mute toggles are not mute toggles. This is just sort of like an indicator to let you know that your camera is being shared. And that takes you to the panel for where you're sharing your camera and microphone. It allows you to revoke those permissions. Having spoken with UX and product, what we'd like to try and do is actually change the function of these. Like sending you to the panel was how the old indicator worked on Windows and Linux. If you remember, there's like this little orange indicator that goes, that sits at the top of the screen. Um, that is something that uh, we've had for a while, but we want to try something new, something that's a little different, something that other browsers don't currently do, as far as I know, which is to allow the user to set a global mute state on an individual device. So for example, if I were was on Talkie here and say I've got a barky dog, let's say I've got a, uh, a dog that um, uh, is barking at a, a visitor upstairs and I don't want uh, everyone to hear it, then I could just click on this mute button and I'll mute the stream. And it's true that most sites already have mute capability like if you this this uh i believe i'm on talkie here if i like hit this button that will mute yeah that will mute the audio it's like no data is being sent to anyone else who'd be in this room with me and i can unmute and then we keep going but you can't assume that every site like the site is responsible for doing that for for knowing that they need to be able the user needs to be able to mute and unmute and we can't enforce that really like that's up the, to the site. They're responsible for doing that. And while it's true that most, like, I think all major sites will do this, will offer mute and unmute capability, um, we want to make sure that users have this control, that they can say, like, hey, whoa, hold on. Um, crazy stuff's happening in, near my camera. I need to cut the camera feed immediately. And then you just click that button and the camera feed stops. And for all sites too, not just the one that's in the foreground, not just like if you've got like six different tabs, you're video conferencing in six different tabs, which is very unlikely, um, but it's possible. We want just a global cutoff so that, oh, there goes a piece of Apple. Uh, so that if uh, you click on that, you don't have to click through each of the tabs to mute your camera. It's just like a one-stop shop. I want to stop the camera feed. Um, and so that's what we want to turn, or the microphone feed. That's what we want to do. Let me just grab this piece of apple. It was just a seed that flew out. Um, yeah, all right. I think that was it. Where'd that seed come from even? I haven't even, where did that seed come from? There's, look, look at this apple, look at this apple. A seed fell out, but I haven't even exposed this like seed chamber yet. How did that work? Magic. Was there like some kind of seed David Copperfield? Who knows? All right. Anyways, I think I've explained the problem. And now let's talk about the uh, the way it'll work. Oh, uh, Tom, Tomato Shadow 2 goes, Hey, Mike, have you used yesterday's nightly or today's on YouTube? Some videos have green on half of the video. Yes, that is a known bug. Check this out. This is the monitor of like, uh, hang on, I'm monitoring... Air Mozilla right now and you can see that like yeah that that bug is in full force it's not just YouTube it's all it's certain video playback it's not all video playback but at certain sites you're you're gonna or certain codecs I would imagine you're gonna get that problem and there's a it's a known bug let me uh let me reference the bug number hold on a second it's this one bug one six five seven one oh seven broken colors on YouTube videos um and apparently it's happening on netflix as well this is like under active like people are definitely looking at this so um video is something we care a lot about 
Um, so this will be fixed shortly. But in the meantime, let me add a link to like the video color bug. Whoops. Uh, actually, it's even better if I just hit copy summary and then paste video color bug. There you go. So follow along with that uh, bug if you're curious about like when this thing's going to be fixed or not. Uh, sorry, Tomato Shadow. As a nightly user, you don't normally hit problems like this. Like nightly is remarkably stable as a browser. I use it as my daily browser. It's not um, often that I, I run it and I regret it. Um, and that way I, I test all the latest stuff. But periodically you'll get a situation like this where like, oh, something's broken. Uh, or it's like weird, weird stuff is happening. And the good news is, is that, um, yeah, it, it, because a lot of Firefox developers also use Nightly, we notice it quickly and then we will fix it. So in this case, it looks like this is a, a regression probably caused by web render on Mac OS. Um, I don't know if it affects other platforms. But uh, yeah, there we go. If you have more information, for example, if you got useful information that's not already in this bug, uh, maybe you can uh, you can comment. Alrighty, so WebRTC, Global Mute, that's the name of the game. How's it gonna work? Well. The first thing to realize, the first thing that was one of the things that was pointed out to me is that this capability of having like a system mute and unmute is something that the spec authors for WebRTC foresaw. Um, if you look at the W3C for media capture, there are two states on uh, on the media track, the media stream track uh, interface. So the media stream track is the thing that that's that represents a stream of media like audio or video that a site can use to like plug into a video element or like send over WebRTC or something. And there are two uh, two attributes worth paying attention to. One is enabled and one is muted. And enabled is one that the site can actually set. It's not read only. They can say it's enabled or not enabled. And that allows the site to do muting and unmuting. So the site can control that state. And their site is supposed to control that state. And then there is this other attribute that is read only from the site, and that's muted. And that's the one I think we want to that's the one we want to toggle. And the muted state, if we read up on it. Uh, let me see here. Do, 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 do. There's something in here about um, I read this earlier. Hold on. Mute is mute. Numerating, hang on, muted. Okay, here we go, life cycle. A muted or disabled media stream track. So if enabled is false or muted is true, renders either silence, black frames, or zero information content equivalent. That's exactly what we want. Um, let's see. Uh, what else is muted, muted, muted? If the document does not have focus at the time, the user agent should instead queue a task to mute the track and not queue a task to unmute it until the document regains focus. Okay, the user agent should re reacquire the device as soon as any live track source by the device becomes both unmuted and enabled again, provided that the track's current settings object responsible document has focus. So it's like if the user unmutes um, and re-enables. But if the document does not have focus, the user agent should instead queue a task to mute the track and not queue a task to unmute it until the document regains focus. If you're requiring the device fails. So one of the interesting things about this is that you can have lots of different sites using WebRTC for lots of different things. In fact, I think it was like Reddit who was recently um, criticized for using WebRTC to, I think, try and fingerprint people. Like WebRTC can be used as a fingerprinting vector and I, I'm not entirely certain of the specifics, but one of the things I was talking about with one of our WebRTC developers was that suppose you're on like five different sites with five different user accounts that are not related to one another. You're logged into five different sites with five different user accounts, and you don't want them to be associated. And let's say all of them are 
you know, using the camera feed somehow. And then suppose that you the user mutes the camera feed globally so that all of those feeds are now, they all enter the muted state. In theory, if those sites were to collude behind the scenes, which, you know, if, they, if they're running ad network code, that's what ad network code does is it colludes, it's third party code that colludes, um, you know, on first party sites, you know, it, it aggregates data. Um, that code could in theory associate your uh your those accounts all together because you muted all around the same time and maybe they could use in theory a high with a high degree of certainty that there is like oh all these accounts are the same person like that that's the thing we're trying to avoid um we want to expose this ability to mute and unmute however um we want to make sure that the fingerprint ability is not um like we don't want to add another fingerprinting vector that's not that's not the intent of this, and that's kind of what's being captured here. Cause like, if the document is in a background tab, then we don't send the mute or unmute event. Cause that's what happens when you when the user agent changes the mute state. We send an event to inform the site or the web application. Hey, the mute state has, has changed. And so uh, we, uh, what the spec is describing here is that we don't want to fire that event. Um, we don't want to, or, or we don't actually want to unmute until the document regains focus. So then and only then should the unmute state change. All right, let's keep reading on this. The intent is to give users the assurance of privacy that having a physical camera, hardware lights, um, and microphone hardware lights off brings by aligning physical and logical privacy indicators, at least while the current document is the sole user of a device. While other applications and documents using the device simultaneously may interfere with this intent at times, they do not interfere with the rules laid forth. Okay. So the mute unmuted state of the track reflects whether the source provides any media at this moment. The enabled slash disabled state is under application control. That, so when they say application, they mean like the website, web application. Enabled disabled state is under application control and determines whether the track outputs media to its consumers. Hence, media from the source only flows when a media stream track object is both unmuted and enabled. You can think of it almost like a faucet, and there's like two chunks to it. There's like the, there's the user accessible or like the web application accessible faucet. They can turn it on and off. And then there's like at the water company they can control whether or not the whole house is getting water or not. And that's the, that would be the muted and unmuted state. So a, a media stream track is muted when the source is temporarily unable to provide the track with data. A track can be muted by a user. Often this action is outside the control of the application. So the web application is not setting the muted state. This could be as the result of the user hitting a hardware switch or toggling a control in the operating system or the browser Chrome. That's us. That's that's what we're talking about here. So um, a track can also be muted by the user agent. Yeah, like that's... So the Firefox could unilaterally decide, for example, uh, I want to mute things. That's not what we're doing here, but in theory, that's what's accounted for here. Applications are able to enable or disable a media stream track to prevent it from rendering media from the source, but a muted track, regardless of the enabled state, will render silence and blackness. So the muted state gets the like final say. Um, a disabled track is logically, logically equivalent to a muted track from a consumer's point of view. It's just like, yeah, no, no data is flowing. So what we really want to do here, like if we use that flowing water metaphor with faucets and like the water company sending water to a house, let's say the house is a web application. And they're individual, you've got like a whole row of houses, let's say five houses. Each one has a you know, different design, they're, they're all different sites. And, and a person inside each house can control like whether or not their water is running. But the water company, which sends water to all these houses, has control of whether or not all of the houses get water or no houses get water. I'm not a city planner or a plumbing, like I'm not a plumber, 
Let's pretend that that's how it works. I think I'm really oversimplifying here, but let's pretend that's how it works. And um, what we want to do is figure out where the best place is to expose privileged uh, privileged um, methods, privileged uh, a privileged API for the browser UI to cut off the stream of water to all houses and then resume them. We also want to make sure that if new houses show up on the block, like if the user goes to a new site um, while the water is, water is cut off, that obviously that new house should also not get any water until the water company resumes, you know, sending water. And the last thing, it's it's sort of like a, um, uh, a thing that I was discussing with UX recently, which was what happens to this state if the indicator goes away? So let's say we have, uh, I'm at um, Google Meet, or I'm using Talkie or Whereby or whatever, and I mute the camera, and then I log off of the site. I leave so that the indicator closes, and then I rejoin it. Is my uh, camera still muted whenever I rejoin? The answer is no. And uh, so we've made a decision, we're, we're gonna try this, where if the global indicator, the little rectangle that appears down here, uh, if it closes, that clears the muted state. So that only when, when it reopens, what it will display is like, nothing is muted. If the indicator has stayed open, then the muted state will stick around. Like we, what we're trying to do is create an association between the state of the indicator and the state of the world for the user. So that if the indicator goes away, then the state of the world for WebRTC has gone away and reset. That's kind of the association we're trying to, to make here. Okay. So that's what we're working with here. And I am not familiar with the media code, really. Um, there are people at Mozilla who definitely are. I've been asking them questions, but while I'm waiting for their feedback, I want to explore this code and kind of get a sense of how it works and how we might be able to stop the water from flowing. So I've already done a, just a little spelunking already earlier this morning and I found this so we have the media stream uh, track class which is a uh, as I believe is an abstract class that um, different implementations of a media stream track sorry it's a media stream track source oh boy because like a media stream track is an instance that exists on a site sites come and go the media stream track source is i believe what is feeding the media stream tracks so if in our housing model you can think of a media stream track as like the pipe from the water company to the house and the media stream track source is like the water pumps at the water company i think that's how it works And I found things like, like, to be clear, this water company analogy is definitely going to break down. It's not a perfect fit, but I hope it was, per I hope it was illustrative. Um, and I found this. First of all, we have this thing, this virtual method that is called when the muted state of the media stream track source, where this sync is registered, has changed. Um, okay, and then there is another method down here called oh, muted change. This is the important one called by a subclass. So a media stream track source or media stream source track, wherever it's called. What is it called? Media stream track source is subclassed as like a video source or an audio source. And there are other kinds of sources as well, like screen sources and all that, I think. And when the subclass has decided that the muted state has changed, it's responsible for um, kind of dealing with that and then telling the parent class, hey, my muted state has changed. Um, so that the sort of the, the more general media code can run about the muted state changing. 
So I want to know more about, like, that's as far as I've gotten in my research. Just going to finish this apple. I apologize. I'm sorry for eating during the stream. Oh, man. Not me at my best. I apologize. Eating with my mouth full. Or, sorry. <laughs> Talking with my mouth full. I guess I don't really need to cover my mouth. I got this pop filter in the way. Oh, no. The camera angle. You can see it. All right. All right. Apple's done. Let's do this. So, muted changed. Who calls into this ever? Like, is this... Uh, I found the place where it was implemented. There's this old bug from, like, three month three years ago where the muted, unmute, and on unmute methods were implemented. Or, sorry, the attribute and the event, the events were implemented. And this was just to sort of, like, add spec compliance. This was done in Firefox 59 was when it first shipped, it looks like. Um, and I don't know how much of it was actually done. Ooh. I got a message. I have a feeling this is unrelated. I might have to get back to this later. Yeah, I'm going to get back to that later. Um, okay, so I've got this little piece of information here. This is where the media stream track mute, unmute stuff was implemented. And I've got this muted changed thing. I want to know if and where this is ever called. Muted changed. Uh, let's see. So using search Fox, we can see that like um, the HTML media element implements a media track, uh, media element track source, or like implements the in abstract interface with a class called media element track source. And it, yeah, calls into the parent. It overrides the, the method and then calls into the parent whenever it decides that it is muted. And muted, in this case, is true if the output mute state is muted, if the captured track on the media element is muted. So a video, like a media element, is really just sort of a, a way of representing, it's like playing back a track. So a media element will be playing audio or holding audio that is being fed into it. And what we're saying here is, well, if the source is muted, then the media element is muted. If the, if the site's muted or it's not enabled rather, um, or if the element mute state is muted, which is interesting, an element can be muted. Let me just double check that. Media element, HTML media element can tell me more. Okay, so this is not read only you can mute you can mute a video element or an audio element um yeah and so if that's the source of the like the media stream track in that case like okay we we, we call that we say that the thing's muted obviously so that that makes sense I'm less interested in the HTML media element. I'm more interested in things like microphones, cameras. Uh, so let's see here. Track sync. Track source. Media stream track. So in the event that a track has muted, then we track sync says that so something there's something called a track sync and i guess if it notices that a track sync can be muted and then it will tell the track that it has muted i've seen this this sort of pattern before where you've got this thing called a sync especially for the, like the media code i ran into it for like video and a sync is where like um you send stuff. It's a, it's a, it's an output, um, and I, I think it's just like it just absorbs things. It, you can think of it as just like a, a, a like a kitchen sink with a with a, a drain at the bottom. So you just like pour stuff into it, and it all just sort of figures out what to do with it. And 
I think oftentimes these sinks um, are for things like uh, decoded video frames. You know, as each video frame is decoded, it'll send it to a, a media sync. And then that media sync figures out what to do with like the individual frames that are coming in, whether or not to send them to a compositor or to send them, like fork them, who knows? Send them to disk, who knows? Um, so you can, it looks like we can change, muted change can be called on media stream track track sync, media stream track source sync. So it implements something called media stream track source sync. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so what calls, what calls muted change on a sync? That's if a media stream track so what? This seems very backwards. I maybe I I got confused. So the if the media stream track source has muted change called on it, it tells its syncs, because there might be more than one, to be muted. Okay. So who says to mute the media stream track source? I only see three places where a media stream track source is muted, and that's all for the HTML media element. I have a feeling it's just not implemented. We don't expose the the controls for muting a other different types of media stream track sources. So what are the other types of media stream track sources? Let's take a look. So let's write that down actually. It looks like we only expose, uh, what was the function called? muted changed um, or we only call muted changed from HTML media element what was that what was it called muted changed uh, from HTML media element uh, media element track source so media elements so video and audio elements as sources can be muted. It doesn't look like there's pre-existing methods for, or pre-existing support, rather, pre-existing support for muting uh, camera or mic feeds. That is my current hypothesis. So what other things implement media stream track source oh i see some uh i see some conversation in the twitch chat let me just read here so smurf d says it's okay that i'm eating well thank you i was hungry uh surprise no mario sound with all the plumber talk oh you're right i so i haven't been using wacky morning dj enough because i don't have my um my tablet next to me that i can just jam i have to like use use this thing my tablet's back at the office and we're not allowed to go back there so let's uh let's let's play some mario sounds oh i should have like it's me mario i don't actually think i have like the downpipe sound i got that Here we go. uh let's do one more and one more perfect all right so uh what was that what else is in here uh, this could maybe help media syncs. So here's a, an article from uh, Microsoft on media syncs. Okay, there's something to read. So I guess this is maybe a design pattern. Um, let's add that to the agenda on media syncs. And lastly, uh, Smurfy writes, not for the implementation, but for how things are named. Okay, cool. Stream sings, presentation clock, stream formats, data flow. Hmm. Cool. All right. What are things that implement this interface? Media stream track source. We've got a canvas capture track source, uh, which makes sense because like you can in theory feed a canvas. Like if you're if you have a canvas and you're like drawing to it, you can take the the raw like video or the raw 
bytes of the the drawing the bitmap and you can send that as a like a media stream to something else you can connect a canvas to webrtc and that that allows you to do things like having a shared drawing surface um and stuff let's see here html media blah, 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 blah. html media element implements it audio stream track dom media stream uh just type deficit let's see okay a local track source that sounds interesting what is a local track source we're gonna look at that in a sec because your microphone and your camera will definitely be local they're from your own devices uh this is all about like ref counting and cycle collection cycle collection basic track source you might want to look at that yeah i'm going to start opening some stuff up local track source basic track source There was also like audio stream track, um, but that doesn't look like it implements it. It looks like it maybe will wrap it, but we'll see. And then where it was video, video stream track, media stream audio destination node. That's getting into like web audio. So an audio destination can become a media stream track. We're not gonna worry about that. Okay. So a basic track source, what is this? A basic implementation of media stream track source that doesn't forward stop. What is who? What is this thing? No one uses this. This is just a. What even is this? Is uh. It looks like this is an unused class. This could be dead code. Maybe leftovers from back in the day, or or something, or maybe it's for testing. I don't know, but it doesn't look like anyone implements that. So I'm gonna put that away. Or no one instantiates one of these things or subclasses it, so we're going to put that away. We're going to look at local track source. Uh, I actually want to look at the header because maybe that's where, or like the there. Oh, okay. So this is the header. It's like there's no, there's no header. <laughs> this is not meant to be brought into other files. So local track source. Um. what is this thing who what what okay so we have places where like you can create oh okay audio track source video track source are both local track sources and you instantiate local track sources for them so let's take a look at audio track source so you create a source you say that it belongs to this principle Here's an audio device. This is what's going to be listening to that source, I guess. Then we give it a media source. Audio track source. Then we say that you're a new so a new an audio stream track wraps a local track source. And a local track source looks to be, remind me again. A thing that wraps up a media source enum. I guess that's like a you can say what kind of source it is. Um, a media track. Okay, and then a listener that listens to stuff enable set enabled for a track so what is a media track let me I should write that down okay so I think I feel like we're, we're starting to make some some headway here what other things implement media track source well local track source looks relevant one of these gets created when um, creating an audio, uh, a local audio track and video track, 
perhaps this is microphone and camera respectively. I don't know for sure, but it could be. Let's let's find those places again. Audio track source. I put references. Local audio track. And video track. Video track. Oh. Okay. Um, and then a local track source seems pretty simple. Uh, implements media track, media stream track source, and holds a media track and a listener. Source listener, among other things. What is a media track? So much abstraction. So much abstraction. What is a media track? Aha, documentation. I love it. Yeah, let's read this. A track of audio or video data. The media type must be known at construction and cannot change. All tracks progress at the same rate, real time. Tracks cannot seek. The only operation readers can perform on a track is to read the next data. Consumers of a track can be reading it from it at different offsets, but that should only happen due to the order in which consumers are being run. Those offsets must not diverge in the long term. Otherwise, we could we would require unbounded buffering. Uh, and then it's saying that this next part should be removed whenever media stream blocking is removed. Tracks can be in a blocked state, while blocked, a track does not produce data. A track can be explicitly blocked via the control API or implicitly blocked by whatever's generating it. Interesting. So what's the difference between a blocked and like um, muted and enabled? Blocked is a remnant of a time when a media stream contained multiple tracks to make sure those tracks stay in sync. We have since then moved AV sync control to the producer of the data rather than letting it be core functionality of the graph. Only media decoder capture is using the functionality and all their sources are purely real time. This means that media stream blocking as a concept is no longer needed. Remo cleaning up will simplify media stream graph. Okay. And this was not touched. This has not been touched in uh, almost uh, more than half a year. Okay. A track could be in an ended state. Ended tracks are permanently blocked. The ended state is terminal. Transitions into and out of the blocked and ended states are managed by the media track graph on the media graph thread. We buffer media data ahead of the consumer's reading offsets. It's possible that buffered data still be blocked. Any track can have its own audio video playing when requested. The media track graph plays audio by constructing audio output tracks as necessary. The data in the track is managed by M segment. Tracks are explicitly managed. Lifetimes of media tracks controlled by the main thread, from the main thread. So I wonder if this is just like the raw bytes that are coming in from like a camera. Ooh, explicitly suspend a media track. Useful, for example, if a media element is pausing and we need to stop its track emitting its buffered data. As soon as the suspend message reaches the graph, the media track stops processing. Reaches the graph, the media graph. I got a feeling that's gonna require, that, that's gonna be part of this. The media graph, I have a feeling, is basically all the underlying plumbing in our model, our mental model of like houses and water and stuff, is the media graph. And I have a feeling, based on what I know about the media stack, which isn't much, admittedly, but I have a feeling it's all managed off of the main thread. And you have to dispatch events to change, update the graph. It ignores its inputs and produces silence, no video until resumed. Its current time does not advance. Now that's for a media element. Um, I wonder if they mean like, like a video or audio element. Okay. 
direct listener set enabled a disabled track is video replaced by black and audio replaced by silence right set enabled and then we say disabled track mode what kind of modes are there enabled silence black silence freeze Ooh. but this is only you for media to stream track Hmm. Doesn't look like this is used by any of our, the stuff that powers the cameras. Okay, current time is ended, is destroyed. There's this source media track, process media track, forwarded input track. Listeners, consumers. There's no notion of when a thing is muted, is suspended on the graph thread. What does it mean to suspend? To suspend and then to resume. Who implements media track suspend? And media pipeline transmit stop. Ooh, that sounds handy. That's in the media pipeline for WebRTC. If maybe we stop if something over the network tells us we should suspend. Suspended while not transmitting. Here's a unit test. Oh, this is handy. Suspended. This is a fake audio track. Added media pipeline, fake audio track. Ecker wrote this, very good. Very good. Shut down. Agent, wait for, okay, here's the test. Setup, test audio send. Where is the suspend? Doesn't look like it's actually like explicitly tested. Okay, well. Less interesting. But a media track can be suspended. That's a control message. Wait, we there's a control message. We want to suspend the media track. Red to call this on. Graph thread. Spinning on creation, destroyed on destruction, main thread only. Okay, call track, suspend. Which thread are you on? Insert on thread, main thread. So you should be able to call on a media track, suspend on the media track. And it looks like that, that's okay. Okay. Suspend. Okay. 
Okay, so media manager. Is there anything in here about media track? Lots of things that are like media track. Stops all live tracks. NZ associated media track. Source listener. Anything in here about suspend? No. But presumably, a local track source, one could expose something on it and call like M track suspend. Is that what we want to do? Is that what we want to do? What's the relationship between suspending and muting? What uh, a media track. This looks like the uh, underlying guts where um, we're really close to talking with the camera or microphone driver. We're, we're much closer. A media track can be suspended and resumed. What is the relationship between muted, unmuted, and suspended? And what is the relationship between a muted slash unmuted media stream track source and a suspended resumed media track? So many different things, so many different things. Um, when you say set enabled for, what does it mean? Set enabled for. Devices enabled. So this is in site control. It's a lot of like C++ promises here. Post a task to set the enabled state of the device. To enable and notifies the associated window listener that the track state has changed. Turning the hardware off while the device is disabled is supported for camera, microphone. How's that work? That's where I was just at. Hang on. kind of self-referential okay if enabled else then not enable device operation resolve device start or device stop Media device. So stop. Media device. What is a media device? Now that is something that I'm more familiar with. A media device. source the source is a media engine source type the start stop 
Oops. It's fake, it's scary. Shut down, take photo, implement source interface, which is all of this stuff. Set track, start, start feeding data to the track. Well, to stop being out of the track. Double stopping is allowed and will turn us okay. This is necessary sometimes during shutdown. Who calls that? Remote video source or so remote video source. And if you say media device stop, who calls media device stop? That's in the event that the source listener has been told to disable. Right. wonder if this is the thing that I actually like is the important part set enabled for Media stream track enabled state. It's always reassuring to see people struggle. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this is intense. Uh, I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a lot. Post a task. Disable the device. Because ultimately, there's going to be some place where it's like we check enabled, muted, right? Unless there's like a, um, if unless that stuff already exists, get muted, get muted. Oh, no. Muted, set muted. Is anything that reads muted? This is not our code. This is the WebRTC third party code. Got set muted. What's the getter? What's the getter? I'm just, I'm just like exploring. Change by sync. Double track. Change muted. So there's this M muted state. A trust, dispatch a trusted event. Or the event name is muted, mute or unmute. Oh, that's interesting. We fire that event right away. That's not what we want to do, I don't think. We only want to fire that event. Um, once the page becomes visible. And I guess maybe only set the mute state to hmm. point three. If new state is true, let event name be mute, otherwise unmute. Yeah. Okay. 
and what reads m muted? M muted. Is there a getter? No, no, don't want that definition. Yeah, there's a muted getter here. And it's only used when cloning things to see if the muted state should persist. Okay, so I'm starting to get a, an impression here. The impression I'm getting is muting and unmuting as it currently stands appears to only really be supported by uh, video and uh, video and audio element track sources. There doesn't appear to be any other support. So I think that's what we're going to need to do. I think I knew that. Or like I was, I was under the impression that we would need to add this capability. But now I think I'm more confident that that's true. Uh, let's see here. And then. Is there more in here about tracks should be muted while the media element is not playing and unmuted otherwise? This is nine months ago. So mute and unmute, uh, mute and unmute was originally added for media elements. Huh. So here's where they did that. Maybe we can use this as like a, a, a sort of a guide. Media element might be a media track consumer. Set muted by element. If intended element mute state equals a mute state return. Output tracks muted, and what is all this? What file am I in? This media element, okay. Init. Audio stream track. Can be initialized as muted. That's handy. I want to try something. Um, media stream track. It looks like when we construct a media stream track, we can. Uh, what, what's M muted there for? What did you add this for?
Oh, I guess because it's part of the uh, interface. Okay. String track muted. And whenever it's muted. So check this out. A muted so the video stream track interface or the class, let's go to it, has this muted argument. And what that does is passes it along to the media stream track, which stores it as M muted. M muted. I don't know if it's ever read if you initialize as muted. So here's what I want to try. Now that I know that media stream tracks, like, I think I knew that. I think it's just, I want to try something here. Um, like uh, local video or local media. What was it? Local, local track source. Where did we create them here? Audio track source. So this is when we're getting the, the stream. We create the track, a media stream track. The first, second, third, fourth, the fifth argument. One, two, three. Video track. One, two, three, four, fifth argument. Dom track, local track source. Let's set this to true. Here, I'm gonna, this is gonna be a pain because I don't think I've done a, a build, like a an opt build recently. So this might not, this is gonna take a while to build, I think. So I don't know if we're gonna be able to actually like try this out, but it'd be, as a sort of initial experiment to see what capabilities we already have, like, if I just set these Boolean values to true, and ever uh, if I connect to like a WebRTC application like Talky, does it only get like does it get no data? Because um, if true, then that's like okay, great. Um, we have these this capability where when we construct these things, maybe we can read a global variable that's like, hey, this is your your mute state. And so we've solved the problem of, um, you know, a new house is added to the block. Let's make sure you don't get any water. The other thing that we will need to do, if that's the case, is be able to go through pre-existing stream tracks and set their state. Not at construction. So you know, pre-existing ones, we need to be able to poke them and say like, hey, you've become muted. Hey, you've become unmuted. And I wonder, I wonder if, so here's something I need to ask the media team about. To avoid the fingerprinting vector, is the idea to set the muted state directly on the local track source, or what is it called? The the, the audio stream track, video stream track, or per spec, um, and where's that comment? Per spec. Only set the uh, set muted unmuted when the page is in the foreground when the application rather and if the application is in the background 
just to feed the feed the streams empty data transparently um, well, without notifying that muted state has changed. So that's a question to ask because we got to avoid that fingerprinting vector, yo. That's important. Um, okay. So I think I've reached the point where I want to I want to like a more precise set of questions for the media team. Like I've done a little bit of homework here. I've walked around. I've found the names. I'm starting to get this like fuzzy impression of all of the classes and all of the different like parts of this. There's this media graph that I suspect maybe you might have to like cue an event to tell it to mute a device because like all the device interaction probably happens off of the main thread. The media graph being the plumbing. Um, so questions for the media team. This is one of them. If the answer to one is to not set muted, unmuted until the page, the application is in foreground, do we want to suspend the sort the suspend the track the tracks for the background tabs background applications is is that the order of events suspend the media track cause a mute cause the mute state to change on foreground applications queue event queue mute events to fire on background tabs when they are foregrounded okay Otherwise, uh, otherwise, what are the main controls? What are the main controls for um, uh, halting all bytes coming from the microphone or camera? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I actually really enjoy this stuff. I love diving into unfamiliar code. Um, this is like. It's exhilarating. It's like exploring a new city, getting, you know, it's, it can be overwhelming, but you start getting used to the, that's what the way I've always sort of thought of code is almost like a city. And if you're seeing new stuff, it's like, okay, well, these are, this is a very interesting street. Where does that lead? Uh, that's a nice building. When was that built? Oh, this is a, this was built in the eighties. Uh, this one's clearly Soviet era architecture, or this one is, uh, you know, very modern, postmodern. Oh, you know, using promises. You must be, if you're using C++ promises, wow, you must have been built in the last 10 years, that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, as you walk around the city more and more, you get used to finding your way around and, you know, the shortcuts from here to there. Um, yeah, that's the way I think about it anyways. Okay, well, while I wait for this to build, is there anything else I can do that's relevant? No, I think I really just want to talk to the WebRTC team now um, and get get their take on how to proceed. Um, all right, I think I'm going to cap the stream here. Hey, thank you so much for watching episode 223 of The Joy of Coding. I hope that was interesting. I know we didn't write any code. Um at all but you know this is legitimately probably what i just did is what i spend at least 60 to 70 percent of my time doing is reading code i don't i don't if you're i find that as you become more senior as well you tend to read more than you write because you're helping people solve problems and you're helping people figure out the history and the way things fit together it's and stuff and you're you spend a lot more time in like shared documents um as opposed to your your editor although sometimes i certainly still write code don't get me wrong 
but um if you're if you're finding that you're writing code more than you're reading code for a pre-existing project that you're working on um then either you know that software very very well or you need to probably read more of the code i wouldn't call that a hard and fast rule um that's more of a i guess that's that's a soft opinion that i have it's like it's always a good idea to read read more before you start doing city reorganization replanning um this is something that one of my um one of my sort of hero software developers at mozilla told me once is that you have to understand the ecosystem software is an ecosystem there's code that are that's supposed to be in these like modules that talk to one another it's not always that clean but you know that's the idea but it's an ecosystem it's a graph of these things and data flows through the graph and it's not enough to just sort of understand one small part of it if you're going to change the behavior you it's it's oftentimes into your benefit to kind of zoom out and understand how all the pieces talk to one another, um, what their assumptions are, the flows of data to understand, uh, you know, the ecosystem so that then you can make changes. Um, you know, uh, an example of not understanding the ecosystem is if you're like, oh, I'll just make this function, if you're a JavaScript developer, I'll just make this function asynchronous and return a promise. Uh, and if you weren't aware of all the consumers of that function, you might have a really serious problem. Well, not a serious problem. You might have a very sort of like a cascading problem of like, you know, things that expected that function to be synchronous are no longer sync. Uh, like it's no longer synchronous. And sort of like that has cascading effects outwards and you have affected the ecosystem like a rock falling into a pond. It ripples outwards um, and you kind of have to grapple with that. So the more you understand about the ecosystem, the easier it is for you to make reasoned changes that aren't going to cause you a headache. Because what will happen if you're not, if you're not understanding the ecosystem is either you make the change and you either get really lucky and it works perfectly. I guess that's possible. Two is you realize that you didn't understand the system. So you have to redo it and restudy and you wasted time. Um, which isn't always the worst thing. Sometimes you have to build and throw away. That's okay. And then the third one is like you ship it, but you didn't understand how the ecosystem works. So there are bugs. There are, there are problems with, you know, the component. It doesn't behave properly or it doesn't behave the way it used to in the way that is expected. And so you've broken assumptions in subtle ways. And that can be problematic. Um, you know, bugs, yo, for serious. Let's do a quick freestyle rap and then I'm going to call it. Um... Let me find a free backbeat. Free backbeat. And then I'm going to I'm going to just do a free free loop. Free backbeat. Here we go. Um free music archive backbeat. Let's see what do we have here. I have no idea what this is. What's the license? This is Creative Commons, non-commercial. Okay, here we go. Yo. Digging deep into WebRTC. Have you been following me as we go deep into the code? It's a very mysterious road. We've been looking around at the methods and variables. It's not that terrible. You gotta read code to understand the system. You gotta know the system. Find your questions and list them and understand the system. Ask other people what is going on when you don't know the system. You gotta find your questions and list them. Yo. Take notes. There you go. There's a there's a freestyle rap for uh oh boy. Didn't mean to track ahead there. 
Uh, freestyle rap for The Joy of Coding, episode 223. Hey, join me next week when we have Yuri Wims uh, co-hacking with me. I don't know what we're going to be working on. We're going to figure something out. Uh, but you should definitely check it out. And I will see you then. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Uh, take care. I'll see you next week. Uh, bye bye See ya.